One of the hardest things you can possibly do on your own is learn how to code. Because without any guidance, you'll inevitably end up lost, confused, or worse, discouraged. In fact, I still remember my experience with trying to take on tech by myself, and it wasn't fun. That's why I decided to create this, the ultimate guide to learning how to code in seven steps. All right, let's just go ahead and jump right in. If I could just figure out where I put that first step. Ah, yeah, there it is. Pick a language. Now this one's really important, depending on who you ask, but pay close attention anyway. Figuring out how to choose your first programming language could actually be its own video. But for now, I'll give you the cliff notes. Your first language should ideally be the most common language amongst programmers building the things you're trying to build. So if you're interested in web development, choose JavaScript. If you want to be a data engineer, choose Python or Java. Or if embedded systems like the code that runs on everyday devices are your thing, go for something like C. All things considered, it doesn't actually matter which one you pick now. However, picking the right one early on will give you a pretty big head start. Alright, time for step two. I keep this one in my back pocket just because it's useful no matter what you're learning. Learn the basics of the basics. No matter what language you chose in step one, the basics are almost always the same in every language. You're going to want to start with the following concepts. Data types, which includes your numbers, strings, booleans, etc. Data structures, which has arrays, objects, linked lists, and many more. And control flow, and these are your basic conditional if-else statements and functions, where you learn how to create reusable code. If you pick these concepts up in one language, you can always use them in another. That's what makes learning the basics so effective. Your fundamentals will take you wherever you want to go. The third step in this guide is arguably the most important, because without it, you'll never retain anything you learn. Build something. Picking simple projects to build will allow you to run into problems that you'd normally never run into with something like tutorials. Overcoming them will help you to develop a better understanding of the concepts you're trying to master. And this is crucial to your learning process. Most of the important things I've learned came from working on projects where I gained experience with things like object-oriented programming and even a bit of data analytics. Feel free to check out some of them on my GitHub account. And now for step number four. This one has a lot less to do with coding and more to do with learning in general. Have a plan specifically one with a goal in mind. It's unwise to try and learn something by jumping into the deep end without some idea of how you intend to assess whether or not you're actually learning or just remembering. One of the easiest ways to do this is to assess how well you're actually following step number three, because if you can actually build something, then you're definitely learning. But you have to make sure you're doing that without following tutorials step by step. Which brings me to step number five, and this one's really important because it tends to trip up a lot of beginners, especially if you're trying to learn this stuff on your own. Avoid tutorial hell. The biggest mistake you can make is following a tutorial step for step and expecting to actually retain anything. The reason I say this is actually because- Isn't this technically a tutorial? If you're going to watch a tutorial, I'd recommend you don't build the exact same thing that they're building in the tutorial. This will force you to develop an understanding of what the tutorial is actually trying to teach you, and apply your learnings to something else entirely. If you can do that, then you've successfully learned something. Now step number six is not to be missed, for it will let you live the rest of your career in bliss. Wow, this shot is ass, I thought I did something. Step number six is learn to read documentation, as you can clearly not read this. Let's take web development for example. It can be tempting to reach for W3Schools as it's probably the most friendly looking thing on the internet, but MDN is usually the way to go. Beginners have a tendency to underestimate the value of expanding one's technical vocabulary. But this is crucial because, in a lot of cases, it can mean the difference between understanding and hitting a wall. 
The language and jargon might be daunting at first, but getting exposed to that will help you speed up your learning process so that you can at least understand what the folks on Stack Overflow are even talking about. Now if you made it this far, then the only thing standing between you and truly learning how to code is actually learning how to teach it to someone. Think about it. In order to teach something, you're almost always required to understand it. Which means, if you get to a point where you're capable of explaining a basic concept to a 12-year-old well enough that they can understand it, then you can officially say you've understood and learned that concept. But they don't have to be 12. Pretty much anyone will do. Even a cat. After posting my first video a few months ago, something interesting happened. I noticed a lot of you guys started to reach out to me on LinkedIn and Instagram and DM me asking for advice and things of that sort. So I decided after throwing a poll on YouTube that it might be the best if I create a Discord server where we can all talk and uh, share advice or just experiences and uh, let's see how that goes. I've left a link to it in the description below. Oh yeah, and if you like my content, feel free to leave a like and a comment and uh, subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time.